This is our fourth session now on the acronym, A-N-T-H-E-M, Anthem, Strategies for Fighting Lust. And we took the first session to define lust and then talked about in the second session the strategy of avoiding. In the third session, the strategy of saying no immediately, like you reflexively pulling a snake away from your neck. And now the third strategy, turn. And what I have in mind here is negative approaches to fighting lust never will succeed by themselves. If you try to simply say, no, 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 I won't think about it, I won't think about it, it won't work. Because like saying, I won't think about white elephants, I won't think about white elephants, because all you do is think about it then. It won't work to be merely negative. This is crucial. The Bible says, say no and flee. But if you don't turn to something positive, this will be the end of of your battle. That is, there'll be a defeat. So, Father, as we tackle now this third strategy of turning to Christ or turning to the gospel or turning to the beauties of grace, grant us not only understanding, but the power to do it, I pray. So, we are focusing now on turn, and here are the texts that I think help us I love this Colossians 3. If then you have been raised with Christ, and you have in Christ, if you're a believer, you died with him, and now you're raised with him, seek the things that are above. So let your mind go running to heaven, not running to the internet, run, not running to hell or to the brothel. Seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. So seek Christ. Set your minds. Yes, this does assume that you can do this, that by the Spirit, through faith, you can direct your mind away from some things. And now I'm arguing for the positive to other things. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. For you have died there's the fundamental reality. With Christ in, that, in union with him, when he died, your old self died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. It's as though you've died and gone to heaven, and you can see and enjoy things there. When Christ, who is your life, appears, when he comes back, you also will appear with him in glory. You're not in glory now. There's a great warfare to be waged here. There won't be any warfare when he comes. We will be done with sinning in that glorious age. But until then, we wage war against lust, and we do it by seeking the things that are above and setting our minds on things that are above. Or Philippians 4, 8 Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there's any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. In other words, take your mind and snatch it away from lustful thoughts. Say no to them. And now I'm suggesting buttress that no, replace that no with a positive yes to the true, yes to the honorable, yes to the just and the pure and the lovely and the commendable. Get your head into something great. So many of our battles are lost because we can't get our heads out of the gutter. We can't get them away from the small and the weak and the impure. But if we form the habit of putting our minds in connection with true and honorable and just and pure and lovely and commendable things, excellent things, worthy of praise, oh, how free we can walk from lust. Now, let's be specific. What kind of image in your mind 
should you direct it toward, should you form as an alternative to the thing you're saying no to? Let's go to 1 Corinthians 6.18. Flee from sexual immorality. And here come some strategies. Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body. Sexually immoral person sins against his own body. Do you not know your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit within you? whom you have from God, you are not your own. So I'm suggesting now that you turn, turn your mind away from lust to this. Say to yourself, I do not belong to myself. Why not? I was bought. How were you bought? With a price. What was the price? The price was the blood-soaked horrible torture of the cross. Christ died to purchase you so that you would not be your own. And if you are not your own, you belong to him. And what is the purpose if you, be, if you belong to him? To glorify God in your body. But the key is to set your mind on the price, the price You remember this simple verse that Jesus spoke? They will mock the Son of Man. They will spit on Him. They will flog Him with whips. And they will kill Him. And after three days, He will rise. And let me suggest that when the temptation comes, whatever form it comes in, and within five seconds, you say no, but you can't keep saying no. You have to put your mind to something positive. You say no. One of the things you can put your mind toward is his mockery. Picture him being mocked and laughed at. Picture him being spit on and the, and the globs of horrible spit running down his beard and face Picture him being knocked down and flogged with leather tongs and pieces of shell embedded in them, stripping his back bare and then dying with a, nails in his hands and a sword up his side. Why? Why? In order that we might not lust. That's why. That's why he did it. He died to purify for himself a people zealous for good works. The strategy is, first, avoid, if you can, all the powers that would pull you into defiling desires. If one comes and touches you, gets into your head, or gets into your heart, or gets into your body, within five seconds, Say, get out of here. In the name of Jesus, be gone. I'm not that. You don't own me. And then turn to the beautiful Christ. Turn to his sufferings. Turn to his gospel. Turn to his face, looking at Peter, saying, would you really deny me, Peter, after what I'm about to do for you? No, we won't, right? We won't. We will turn to the Lord, and we will let his beauty wean us off the power of this lust.